If progressive overload is present, your training volumes are probably just not that important in terms of your muscle growth. All right, hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here. And when I say this, I wanna be, be very clear on this. I'm not saying that programmed progression uh, is automatically the case. What I am saying is that if you are doing challenging work sets, right, stuff that's very close to failure or to failure, and there is a general progressive overload, that is evidence that you are gaining muscle. Okay, that is evidence that you are gaining muscle and therefore uh, training volumes and such are probably not that relevant anymore. Um, and, and it sounds a little bit controversial, it sounds a little bit conflicting because, you know, we have all these talks about training volumes and minimum volumes and how much we can recover from. Uh, but here's the thing that we have to remember. Uh, progressive overload and progressive tension, we could argue may be the driver of hypertrophy, but we know it's almost always uh, evidence of hypertrophy. And I'm not talking about your one rep maxes, I'm not talking about when you cheat weight up. What I am saying is, if your consistent range of motion, consistent tempo lifting has a general upward trend in either the reps that you can do or the weight that you can move, you are probably gaining muscle. You're almost certainly gaining muscle, particularly if you're done with a novice face. Uh, and as far as stimulating growth, if your sets are challenging enough, you are probably stimulating at least some muscle growth, right? The problem we run into though is, are we doing enough volume on that end to stimulate it because it may be below what you need? Or are we doing so much that we're not recovering, uh, we're, we're, we're not recovering because we're not sleeping enough, eating enough or whatever relative to the volumes we're doing, okay? So that gets very nuanced, and this is where programming comes in and coaching comes in and everything else. But a point that I wanna make clear, uh, if you are doing hard enough sets to stimulate growth, and you are seeing a general upward trend, you are gaining muscle. Now, does that mean it's optimal? It may not be optimal, but you are gaining something. And, and I think the point that we need to keep in mind when it comes to gaining muscle if we are making any progress at all month to month, that is better than nothing. Because keep in mind how many people stall for years. I've seen people who go and train and their training is so off, they don't make any progress in an entire year. No gains anywhere. Okay? And sometimes they're not advanced lifters. It's one thing when you're very advanced. It's another thing when you're not. So if we are doing something that we know is giving us progress in general, we're on the right track. Uh, but keep in mind that that's going to be slow when you get really advanced. And you know, you get people who are like, oh, well, my, my isolation movements haven't gotten stronger in months. Well, who cares? <laughs> right? Uh, they're not going to get significantly stronger unless you're doing 12 or 13 rep sets and then you picked up a rep and get to 14. Okay. But you're not going to add significant weight, you know, with, with it, unless you can microload and you have access to one pound plates or half pound plates, right? Because, I mean, a, a 25 pound curl, if you think about that, how strong do you have to get? How much muscle do you have to gain to up to 27 and a half for the same reps? Well, that, that could be significant on that dumbbell. But in general, when we see the upward trend, we're in a good place. Now, the problem with this is that people see novice programming then and they go, oh, so as long as we're adding weight to the bar, are we always making gains? Well, not necessarily because you could be way stronger than what's on the bar. Some novice programs might have you holding back. Uh, you might be way below your threshold. And, and just because you're adding a little bit of weight every week, but the sets aren't hard enough, okay, you may be stimulating something if you're a novice. But if they're not challenging enough, it may not be significant gains. So I don't want to say any time we are progressing by, by programming that we're getting anywhere. Because there's a lot of, of things that coaches do there to psychologically trick lifters to give them more time to make gains. What I mean is hard sets. If you were taking sets within one rep to failure and you were progressing, 
you're on the right track. You know that something is valid incorrectly. And that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that because you progress and there you have multiple reps in reserve. Like if you if you know you have at least three or four reps in reserve and, and you're still adding weight to the bar slowly, you may not be stimulating much of anything, particularly if, if it's five or more reps in reserve. Okay? So that's not what I'm saying. Um, but generally speaking, progress is evidence of hypertrophy. The hard set stimulated. So when you understand it from that perspective, if hard sets stimulate growth and progress is evidence of growth, now we know that we're on the right track, okay? Irrespective of what your volumes are, your volumes don't have to be optimal. They don't have to be perfect in that case because we're seeing progress, okay? But also keep in mind progressive overload is not ego lifting. In other words, if you, I don't know, we're doing 200 pounds for eight reps and you build up to 200 pounds for 12 or you build up to 220 or 225 for eight, but the form is not the same, then that's not progressive overload. Okay, is your range of motion shorter? Are you bouncing a weight? Okay, guys will do that on bench press and think they progress. It's like, dude, you're bouncing the bar off your chest. Your butt's coming off the bench on the last three reps. You didn't progress at all. You're just cheating. And, and that isn't progressive overload because you've not increased muscle tension. You've not increased tension on the muscle fibers. Um, and we also wouldn't count a progress always on a one rep. Max is, is evidence. Because again, there's neural drive components, there's technique components, there are other things involved besides purely hypertrophy. But if you have an exercise that you've been doing a little while, you, you have the motor unit learning down, and, you're, and you are consistently over time adding a little weight or adding reps while keeping the form the same, and a form that you can't cheat that much on, right? Because you can't, you can't estimate how much bounce you're doing on the bench. Are you bouncing harder <laughs> than you were before? So, so as long as the technique is, is the same, the range of motion is the same, you're making gains in that case. So hopefully that makes sense when we break it down that way. So again, what do I mean by this? Well, what I mean is if you are using similar form, right, similar range of motion, and you're seeing general progress, you are gaining muscle irrespective of how low or high your volumes are. And I'm not saying volumes don't matter. What I'm saying is the progressive overload tells you that something is dialed in correctly. All right, you're on the right track. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I'll talk to you guys next time.